Hey everybody, it's that time again for another Let's Play. It's been a year since we did the Betrayal of Kalth, and Chris and I are back. A whole year. <laughs> for another, it, it doesn't feel like a no. year. I think I was still catching up from the sleep from the first one. <laughs> <laughs> like, we need sleep. Every time we do this, we don't need oh. sleep. And it's my daughter's birthday this weekend, and gymnastics graduation, and I didn't need to sleep, but it's fine. Um, what we're doing today is we're bringing you at midnight um, an unboxing video for the Horse Heresy Burning of Prospero. And then when you're done watching this, we're also gonna be doing Let's Play Burning of Prospero, Missions 1 and Missions 2. Um, we'll also be doing the following missions in the coming weeks, but you'll be able to check out the first missions for this new light war game. It's a bit different from Betrayal Calth. It feels less like a board game and more mm. like um, a, a war game light. Kind of like, if you ever played it in your old like me, Battle Masters was a war game light for um, a Milton Bradley reference for those guys who played it uh, and we'll check out the models and stuff as well so we're gonna watch through the whole box we're also gonna show you this week's white dwarf because if you're interested in using these miniatures in the age of darkness mm -hmm. buy it because everything that's new here the full rules for it won't come out until the new book inferno inferno yeah, book yeah. seven or whatever yeah because that's when the talons of the emperor i believe it's called um, which is a new force list will be coming out and that's going to have all the Imperial Agent stuff. So guys like the Oedipus Custodes, we're going to have the Sisters of Silence um, and all the new exciting kind of like... And all the Space theaters. Wolves and Thousand Sun rules, which are... Which are brand new as well. That's right. So so it's it, it's kind of... I think we're going to focus on this board game for the most part right now because we don't know a lot about the rest of it. Um, but there are going to be some unique caveats in this video. Things you don't want to look out for, especially when you're building this box. Um, so that when you do get to it, if you do want to use them in 30k, you don't accidentally build them in a way, like I almost did, um, that you may or may not be able to use. So, let's take a look without any further ado at the box, um, The Burning of Prospero. So here we have it, The Burning of Prospero, all laid out for the first mission, and you can see here our painted forces. So, once again, um, if you own a Betrayal of Kalth, this model, or sorry, this box set comes with the same sort of quality components. You have full 40K style models. The only things that you're gonna find that are Legion specific are going to be Azek Aramon um, in his pre-heresy armor style and Gygor Felhand right here, the Space Wolf character. Um, and they are the ones who sort of mark these guys out as Space Wolves or as um, Alpha Legion. Now, the reason that's important is you can use these guys at any Legion you want. And when you look at what Chris has done, he's actually used them as Death Guard. His uh, traitor army is going to be Death Guard. Now, luckily, I'm actually planning on doing Space Wolves, um, so I painted them up like the box. But um, these guys are all model neutral enough. He was even able to convert Azek Aramon into a Death Guard sorcerer, so a member of the library has gone horribly wrong. Now, what you get in this box is exactly what you see painted here. You get three Legion Veteran Tactical Squads, or you can make them as regular Legion Tactical Squads, which I did. I made that mistake with Betrayal of Kalth. Um, and it kind of pigeonholed me into doing nothing but, um, what's it, it's, uh, Pride of the Legion yeah. for a while. So if you don't want to do Pride of the Legion, you want to build some, if this is your first Horse Heresy 30k box set, um, don't give them any special weapons, and then they are not going to uh, force you into a certain right of war later on down the road. That's pro, 30k pro tip number one. <laughs> um, so this is uh, one... And you can see two, three is what you're gonna be building if you wanna follow the actual sort of like order of battle for the box set. You get a unit of Adeptus Custodes, which are the Emperor's Custodian Guard. Now another building thing, when you follow the instructions in this box set, it will prompt you to make one of them with a big Imperial banner. If you wanna use them as a troop choice, this is gonna be important later on when you look at the White Dwarf and the spoilers for the 30K rules for the Custodes. Um, you're gonna to wanna to give them all one type of weapon or another, either all uh, Storm Shields and Guardian Blades because then they become a Guardian Squad or you give them all the uh, Halberds because if you give them the Guardian Spears, then they become a troop choice. So the way I have them built, they're a troop choice. They have Guardian Spears um, with built-in Kami Bolters um, and they'll be able to be sort of like a uh, core slot filling unit for the engine if one of these guys is an allied force with one of my armies later on. Keep, keep some flexible. Yep, yeah, exactly. Keeps them sort of standardized. Uh, you get Geiger Filmhand, as I showed you earlier on. He's got his crazy Mastercraft Wolf Claw and a knife, because why not fight with a knife if you're that stabby? And you get the Sisters of Silence. Um, what I love about these miniatures so far 
if you've gone back into like the sort of 30k lore, one of the first times you saw pictures of all of this stuff was for the Horus Heresy Sabretooth card game. And these guys look like they've stepped straight out of that art. Now, uh, my buddy Dave Taylor had one of the first Custody armies. He actually, when that came out, converted an entire army of these guys out of like high elf bits and stuff. And it was in the US White Dwarf. I'm not sure if it featured overseas, um, but he did a great job of capturing that look. And these guys are, are exactly the same. Huge, beefy, 40 mil base, um, bulky, super space marines. Uh, this is just silence as well. Top knots, bald heads. These guys are all pariahs, so psychic blanks. And I give them all their Executioner Grand Blades, so they're a melee squad. They come with flamers and bolters as well, so you can make them however you want. Um, and we haven't seen the 30k rules for them yet, just the 40k rules that have been sort of shown off. Uh, and hopefully in Inferno we'll get a little more detail on them. I doubt it'll be too far off what the 40k rules are, uh, but as of right now, we don't really know what they do in 30k. Um, what I did last night was I put some base coats uh, and washes down on these guys. I just got them tabletop ready. Chris and I have lots of practice uh, with midnight releases when we both work for workshop getting stuff ready to go. So these are the, these are the, I can come back to them later and add all the highlights and details, but they look okay from three feet away. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, that's my contribution. And of course, Chris's death guard, two more Legion veteran tactical squads and plastic Tartarus pattern terminators. Um, there was cataphracty in the first box. These ones are Tartarus. Uh, Chris applying lots of airbrushing here to get the whites finished. And of course, the shoulder pads looks like you did them separately and then glued them on afterwards. Yeah, it's a good idea with uh, if you want to use the airbrush for sure. It makes it easier. Yep. Um, and then these guys are uh, the Terminator armor option that allows you to make sweeping advances. Great for melee guys. So uh, probably the best Terminator suit to wear if you're a character in 30K because it means you can chase dudes down. Um, and then the Mark III pattern armor, uh, new in plastic. It gives you options for a power fist, lightning claw, thunder hammer, power sword. Uh, you don't get a whole lot of heavy weapons. You only get a heavy bolter in this one, as opposed to heavy bolter. And you only get the launcher. plasma and the melted gun. There's actually That's no flavors right. in there. I actually stole them from my calf. You box. stole them from the calf <laughs> box. I was gonna say, I wondered where those came from. Um, and I think there are rules for flamers in this one. There are not, so you won't be able. Those flamers are all gonna count as melted guns in this. <laughs> there game. we go. I knew you're gonna screw something up. <laughs> I was like, something doesn't look right in this box, and that's what. Well, it they're was. also not red, so there's that. They're also not red. Well, it's fine. You've done them in a, in a slightly different color. They're still traitors, at least, which yeah, is fine. That's right. Um, um, and that's look at the models. So um, the remainder of these models that aren't, of course, the characters are all um, full sort of 40K style kits, individual bits, uh, and you can build them however. So this is a look at the Tartarus pattern terminators. And then down here we have the um, 30K guys, the, the sorry, Mark III guys. Uh, as, as far as it comes to components from the actual box game, much like Kalf, heavy gauge cardboard. Uh, this stuff, however, is a lot more of a sort of battle board than Kalth was. Kalth was these hex tiles that you built together to build the tunnel sections. This you could actually just play like a skirmish game on if you wanted to. It comes with individual pieces of scenery that block line of sight, so there's blocking pieces of scenery, which actually makes the thing very versatile because you've got more than just the flat tiles to give you all of your sort of like um, informed details and the board can change up. Now those are the first two tiles we'll play on. They are all double-sided, so when you look at some of the bigger ones back here, um, this is one of the portal chambers for a later mission. And then two of these go together to make another uh, sort of like control room. Um, and they can be flipped over. So here's another one. And it flips over to have like a huge whoa, lava flow and stuff on it too. Um, all of the scenery pieces, portals for the portal mission later on, generator, big walls. Um, and they make the tiles a little bit different every, every, like, sorry, every time you play. Uh, so I have to say the playing surface is really impressive because you do feel like you're playing a war game. Like it does feel like you're playing a, uh, uh, a sort of like war game light. And with the addition of like 2D terrain and stuff too, you get a, a lot more immersion I found so far having played this game than Kalth where you, because the, the board was a weird shape, I felt like I was playing a board game. Um, now this thing right here, it's ostensibly a terrain piece, and it does get used in the map a whole bunch. But we're also going to use it our initiative counter. This is a handy little pro tip for playing the game. Every turn you roll to see as the initiative, one side's the Emperor, the other side's Magnus. So you can just <laughs> flip it over at the start of the turn, and you'll know who has initiative. Because initiative can become very important for a lot of things throughout the game. The other thing I love about this so far, they weren't afraid to throw weird dice in. And as a, a sort of like a second edition and rogue trader veteran, um... I love the fact that there are D&D &D dice in here. There's D8s, D12s, and D10s. And the basic mechanics of the rules, uh, which you'll see in the Let's Play, involve just throwing bigger dice and then having dice pools. And highest to lowest dice, you rank them, and that's how you do your hits. So most, most stuff is just done by throwing big dice, um, and you want to have a higher or, or sort of like bigger possibility dice in the pool if possible. Uh, we have our wound counters. 
for the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, which one, I keep looking at Death Guard and wanting to say Death Guard, for the <laughs> Thousand Sons, um, you have all of your psych powers, and there's five different cults. So for the first mission, you're all part of the Cult of Pavoni, but the Pyre are in here, the Corvidae, the Athanians, and there's one more, the Raptora. Um, every mission, you have your primary cult suit, which is the, the cult that you'll basically pull three automatically from, and then you always have five powers you can play. Anyone alive on the table can play them, so you can draw them from any of your cults. Uh, all of you guys are considered to be psychers. Um, you, what you get to do is you get to deal out uh, two extra ones from the other cult. So you basically have like your primaris power, which is your primary cult, and then two secondary powers, and you play them during what's called the enumeration phase, which you could just call the psychic phase if you wanted to, at the start of every turn. You have your warp deck and your willpower deck, and you play a little card game during that phase where you flip cards to generate your warp power, and then the loyalist player flips cards to try and resist them with willpower. Um, and that's how your sort of powers manifest. All the powers can have counters as well. They can have various effects. If it's Inferno from the Pyre um, can place an Inferno counter on a tile and it makes it blocked basically for a turn. So you actually create scenery and stuff throughout the game that will hurt people and will also cause people to not be able to see through and move through stuff too. Um, and then finally you get your books and your other accessories. So you get two books in here. Um, and two cheat sheets. The cheat sheets have the rules for everything your models can do in the game. And whatever the possibilities are for equipping your models, except Flamers Chris, <laughs> are on this sheet. So if the sprue has it, you can you get the rules for it right here. So it's nice because it's just a double sided sheet for each side and all your possibilities, except Flamers, are just on here. Um, and you get one for the good guys and one for the bad guys. Well, bad, ostensibly bad guys, the misunderstood guys. Um, and then your two books, the rules and all the missions in one. I'm not going to go too much into that. And then Legions at War, The Burning of Prospero. I think this is my favorite book of the two because it's effectively a mini version of, or a preview even for Inferno. It's a mini softcover version of one of the big leather bound hardcovers from um, Black, or sorry, not Black Library from Forge World. Gives you the history of the conflict, why the Space Wolves are there, all of the units. And they're sort of like histories as well and the armor types. So all that cool information that you get, like the backgroundy stuff about 30K, if you're a 30K novice, this is gonna give you a great sort of like preview into all of that information. And I think it's fantastic. Um, the rules of the game themselves, we'll go through in the Let's Play. Uh, but six basic missions. There's an expanded mission already in this White Dwarf, allowing you to take a Dreadnought too. Um, and it gives you the, the basic ins and outs of the game. So. Once again, just like a Betrayal of Kalth, um, super high component quality. No matter what your local price tag is for this, because obviously it can vary depending upon where you live, um, you get a ton of miniatures. What is it, 42? 47, 47 miniatures. Yeah. So 47 fully multi-part posable miniatures, all usable in 30K. Um, you could use them as one big loyalist army like right off the get-go, or you could use them as a slightly less big trader army right at the get-go um, and just be playing 30k. So whether you're a 30k knit, like novitiate and you haven't played before or you're just looking to add lots and lots of troops to your 30k army, like my plan is I own two cals already. I now have enough plasma guns and melting guns to make two um, tactical squads that can, uh, sorry, the tactical support squads um, that can now fight for my alpha legionnaires. So the first half is gonna be space wolves. I have lots of leftover mark four guys and bits and pieces and actually just space wolf bodies. So when Inferno comes out, I'll do my Space Wolves, and the rest of this box that's going to go into reinforcing my Alpha Legion. Big release, of course, this weekend is the White Dwarf Mag. It's, of course, one of the new big format White Dwarfs, um, and it primarily features the Age of Darkness and this new box set. So <clears throat> if you're a big fan of 30k, what you're probably looking for is this section right here. I'm just going to skip to it right away for some spoilers. These are the Inferno um, uh, stat lines for the Custodies. Now, the Sisters of Silence aren't in here, which is worth noting. Uh, they are only going to be, I guess, in Inferno later on, or maybe next month's Mike Dwarf. We don't really know. Uh, they could just show up later on, but Inferno's not that far off. That's really a huge deal, and there are some 40k rules for them to get the idea. Now, the important thing to realize is that the Custodian Guard Squad and the Sentinel Squad are two separate things, right? You, you, one's got all spears, one's got all shields and guardian blades, or sorry, Sentinel War Blades. So, Build them one way or build them the other if you're planning on using them in 30k. If you're planning on using them in 40k, then you can mix and match, and then you get tasty things like Storm Shields, Eternal Warrior, blah, 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 all the, all the cool special rules you need to, to stay alive in 40k now, because 40k right. is... Got too just real. The, it's got too real, it's too <laughs> murderous. Um, but the 30k squ like squad rules are all in here for this. Um, as of right now, they're just telling you to use them as a, um, a uh, ally detachment, and just pick another squad to be your HQ. So if you could somehow lay your hands on one more model, 
or just another squad of five, um, then you can have yourself a, a, a allied detachment right away for your loyalist army. You've also got an extra mission, the Burning of Prosper, the Armor of Contempt, which gives you a Contemptor Dreadnought profile. So if you wanted to use your Betrayal of Kalth Contemptor um, as a Space Wolf Contemptor, you've got rules for it right here, and a whole new mission to go through, which is pretty super sweet. So it gives you a seventh mission, seventh scenario to go through and play, and of course it cuts some promos for all the new hot stuff, like Russ, um, and of course like the... Uh, the Dominar Ferrum Battle Automata and the Mastodon. Mastodon. Yeah, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's like more. It's more expensive than Thunderhawk though, which it's, like breaks my heart. I want one so bad. It does do have wings. I know. I know. I don't know if I want one more than I want to have a kidney though. So we'll see. But they're super. It's so pretty. It's so cool. Anyway. Um, that's the main 30k stuff from this White Dwarf, so if you are excited about um, the Burning of Prospero and of course 30k in general, this White Dwarf's definitely got something for you. So it's been a year since Patrol of Calf, and of course we are now starting new armies, me with Space Wolves, you with Death Guards, yeah. um, and we are now living in the rich, dream-filled world of plastic 30k armies. It wasn't what the internet said it was going to be, it wasn't Assault Marines, it wasn't Breachers, it was more tactical armor-like profiles. I honestly didn't think it was going to be those things. Yeah. Because it kind of still sells off I mean, world. Now, now that we've seen it, I, I really kind of understand where they're coming from. Yeah. It, it, and it, I think what they're trying to do is create a, a real good base for all the plastics. Yeah. And when you when you think and, about it... And then Forge will can make accessories. They'll, yeah. they'll make shields. They'll make all the jump packs. I would packs. put money on the fact that we're yeah. going to see a breach upgrade kit. In the in, next, month, in the next month or two. Yep, absolutely. And, and I think I think what's interesting is it's kind of putting the balance back into the Forge world and Citadel camps where Citadel's making the bodies and Forge was yeah. making the accessories. Because for a long time, yeah. it got crazy where you had like, Forge was making more different kinds of Space Marines than, than Citadel's factory was. I'm pretty sure someone walked into the Forge world from Gibbs where I said, why are you guys making so many rest of Space Marines? <laughs> There's a lot of Space Stop Marines right here. That's true. <laughs> and and well, I think what's great about that though too is yeah. it really does make it more accessible to play Horus Heresy games because yeah. you're not paying like $150 to $200 mm. a tactical squad, yeah. which you could have been doing like a year and a half, two years ago, if you're living in Canada, obviously. For it's not necessarily yeah. the same everywhere else with currency, but like, um, I think my first 10 Mark IV or Mark III Marines probably cost me at least 120 bucks. Just not good to think about. I don't even I want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I think the reason I never built them for like years- the it's it's crazy. You did. That's it, you did. You bought you buy dudes with shoulder pads yeah. and arms like this. Yeah. And then you bought everything else separately. And we still did it because we're just crazy. <laughs> it's the only game in town, man. You had to. You had to. Supply think and demand. From, from, from a retailer from a <coughs> perspective, it, it definitely is going to increase the support too because when, you know now that I can sell the box to people, yeah. sell the models to people, I'm more likely to, to support the game. Right? Yep. I want people to come and play it in my store. So Absolutely. It's, it's just all good for people that want to do 30K. And you've done a lot with Calf. So, so if you guys don't know this because you don't live in Southern Ontario, Lords of War Games and Hobbies is probably the biggest 30K store in Ontario. And you definitely run the biggest uh, 30k event uh, in Ontario. Yep. I don't know if it's in Canada because I've not been to any of the ones in Canada. I know there's a big one out in Calgary actually um, that just happened. Uh, and there's another big one in Edmonton that just happened. Yeah, we've been getting, we've been getting like 20, between 20 and 26 people for Horse Heresy, which is just awesome. You've had yeah, team obviously. tournaments, yeah. yeah, you've had a singles yeah. tournament, you have doubles tournaments, um, and that that's not something that would have really previously existed without Calth and without this box. Absolutely. Because most of those guys are basing their armies on the fact that you can almost buy a 30k army in a box yeah. now. You know, you just add a, a cool tank or a dreadnought to this and you you got a really a cool army, right? So. Yeah. And what's I think a lot of people don't really realize, most of the patterns of Space Marine vehicles existed in 30K. So the Mars Pattern Rhino is just another 30K Rhino. Like oh, yeah. You don't have to have the Demos Pattern Rhino. You can yeah. use the Mars Pattern one as well. The Mars Pattern Land Raider is just a Land Raider still in 30K. 30K focuses on different patterns of the same vehicle, but you can just use those and have them be 30K vehicles. Land speeders, bikes, uh, even the box dreadnoughts. Uh, hey, you're, you're Salamander. Yep. Yeah, I got a bunch of box dreadnoughts for Salamanders. Yeah, it's all awesome. Like you can just, you, I mean, you can do little cool conversions too. Of course, yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, if you want to, it's it's up to you. The, the knight army can almost be completely done with plastic knights now, which we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Which we've seen. Which we have seen. Them, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which we've seen. <laughs> you know, it's real good against Space Marines. It's too Six real. <laughs> it's too it gets real. real. It gets really it's real. Six real. nights against guys with bolters. It gets really real. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed our unboxing of this. Um, if you guys want to check out lots of 30K action, check out loads of more games and hobbies. They will have um, events pretty much monthly yeah, or well, bi-monthly. At the store, we're doing pretty much monthly stuff. Yeah. But uh, next year, we have two exciting tournaments, one in the spring, one in the fall. And they're going to be really cool narrative campaign weekends you're not going to want to miss out on. So. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll see you guys um, in the next video. You can click the link below to come check out our game one and game two for Prospero Burning um, and watch as the Space Wolves assault the 
the Death Guard <laughs> that were stationed on Prospero. Uh, it'll all be the same rules though in the same yeah. models. So uh, we'll walk you through the first two missions and then uh, after that you guys can see the further ones in the coming weeks. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Burning of Prospero. Uh, until the next video, I'm Ash, this is Chris. Have a great